President Trump forced to respond to concerns that he tweeted to the world a classified satellite image. The image, a high-resolution picture of a failed rocket launch in Iran taken by what appears to have been an intelligence community satellite. The president was asked about the image and where it was obtained late today. Here was his response. I just wish Iran well. They had a big problem. And we had a photo, and I released it, which I have the absolute right to do. And we'll see what happens. You'll have to figure that one out yourself. But we'll see what happens. They had a, a big mishap. It's unfortunate. And uh, so Iran, uh, as you probably know, they were going to set off a big missile, and it didn't work out too well. Had nothing to do with us. Out from now, Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego. He sits on the House Armed Services Committee as a veteran himself. Congressman, thanks for taking the time tonight. Thank you, Jim. So let's begin with this. The president tweets out a, a picture, appears to be taken from a, a U.S. surveillance satellite. Those images are, by their nature, classified. Uh, the president claims an absolute right to declassify anything, which is, of course, true. That said, at what cost? What capabilities will the president have revealed to Iran and the world here by tweeting this photo out? Look, I don't know. Uh, and what, what we should be asking is, what is the end goal of this? And what is Iran's uh, reaction going to be to our actions? And how does that actually further the interests of the United States? It doesn't. This president is doing foreign policy by tweets. He has this mean girl policy when it comes to dealing with our enemies and with our allies. And it's just not uh, you know, becoming of the president of the United States. What do you think his, and I know this is difficult to do, but what could be the possible benefit of denying something that the U.S. was not accused of, it wasn't accused of being involved uh, in this failed missile launch. What is the president, is he trying to send a message to them? Look, you're trying to find logic in what I believe is illogical actions of this president. I'm not going to try to go down that wormhole. It's impossible. I think we have to re recognize that this president does not quite understand where he is in terms of the world uh, order when it comes to the great power competition. Uh, we've had previous presidents that un really understood what, what we had to do. And the one thing when it comes to, you know, uh, power struggles in this world and trying to exert power is he needs to understand power whispers and weakness screams. And right now, uh, I think he's screaming and it really shows that we are isolated from our allies and are not in a very good negotiating position when it comes to Iran. Uh, the, the New York Times, uh, I'm going to read from here, uh, quote, in the power circles of Tehran, the idea has taken hold that Iran must eventually negotiate with President Trump. Several people with knowledge of that shift telling the Times this is based uh, on their perception that Trump could win re-election and they can't survive six more years uh, of sanctions. Is it possible that the president's sanction strategy is putting due pressure on them and that that pressure is working? Well, I think in many regards, the sanctions regime that you see with Iran has been a continuation of the policies under uh, President Bush, President Obama, and now President Trump, something that's been very bipartisan in, in many ways. The one area that I think that we are lacking is the fact that we've usually had universal acceptance among our allies that the sanctions regime is the best way to force Iran to the table. Uh, what happened when we left the JCPOA is that we essentially have created a situation where Iran has found new allies in our old allies uh, and are trying to find a way around this. So. Hopefully, we can bring uh, back uh, that alliance. Hopefully, we can go back to the negotiating table. I actually do not wish the president ill. Hopefully, Iran does want to negotiate with us because that's in the best interest of this world. But what I, what I fear, however, and what many of us fear, is that we may push ourselves in a situation where we find ourselves in a hot war because we're so intent on uh, pushing buttons, such as sending out these random tweets, that it creates a miscalculation by Iran, and we have a preemptive war that gets started. And one thing that was clear from the G7 summit is the U.S. has not moved its allies on, on leaving the Iran nuclear deal, as President Trump did. I do want to ask you about former Defense Secretary James Mattis. You, a fellow former Marine, uh, he's speaking out for the first time since leaving the Trump administration. Mattis telling CBS News, uh, I'm quoting here, I will not speak ill of a sitting president. I'm not going to do it. He's an unusual president, our president is. And I think that especially with... Just the rabid nature of politics today, we got to be careful. We could tear this country apart. As you know, Mattis resigned in 2018 over Trump tweeting uh, the U.S. withdrawal from Syria. I wonder, uh, he's taking subtle criticism here of the president, but, but he's not going so far as to say uh, the president has made clear mistakes, uh, the president is unfit. And I wonder if you think uh, that's a mistake. If he has something to say, should he say it? 
Well, he, he can make his own decisions. I think, unfortunately, he wants to have it both ways where he gets to say what he you know, likes to say about the president, but not take criticism for actually speaking out against the president. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that, that disturbs me about, uh, you know, Secretary Mattis says is that, you know, we can tear this country apart. This president is tearing this country apart. Uh, and it is incumbent, I think, upon any uh, elected official, Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, that we do everything to make sure that this president doesn't tear this part, uh, this country apart. So, you know, Secretary Mattis has a right to his privacy, has a right to keep his confidence with this president. Uh, but let's not, let's be clear, what is happening right now is abnormal, and this president is tearing this country apart. And I'm sorry that Secretary Mattis somehow does not see that already.